2017, you made your step up to, to of course, football with Bristol Rovers. Was, you know, when you had that first contact with Daryl Clark, you know, were you backing yourself that you could make a step up to the professional game? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I think one of the things that I thought, so obviously, I got that trial through uh, the UK Armed Forces Manager. Um, that's like the top level you can play within the, the forces. It's like RAF, Navy and Army combined. You play against like the Netherlands and stuff like that. Wow. But he was like, I think you could play professionally. Um, I've got you a trial with Bristol Rovers. It was like through through an agent that he knew. So they got wow. me the trial and I sort of, I only had like two weeks notice before it or something. And I was just like, I've got one of my mates who's like a PT in the army. We were running every day. Like literally I was doing like mad runs and getting fit and doing yo-yo tests and stuff like that. And I, I thought to myself, if anything, I just want to make sure because it's pre-season, I want to make sure I'm at the front of all the running just to make it like a good impression. Yeah. I still wasn't at the front. <laughs> I still wasn't at the front, but I was up there. <laughs> I think Chris Lyons was at the front. <laughs> spoke to him the other day at the front. yeah I know I know you said um, but I remember doing like a keep ball session my first day and um, I was way off it <laughs> <laughs> it was so quick like and I was just thinking oh my god like you know when you're on trial you think of all the bad things as well I was thinking all the time that I give the ball away and stuff but you don't think about the good things so you overthink it all and I remember walking in from training and the gaffer come up to me and he tapped me on the back. He's like, don't worry about it, son. That's not, that's not your thing, is it, that? <laughs> and I was just like, oh, he, he thinks I'm rubbish. Uh, but then as the week went on, like, I got better and more up to the pace of it. So um, obviously after, it seemed like I was on trial for ages. I think I played about, I don't know, like five or six games. Wow. But I think I was actually only on trial like 10 days. Wow. But I don't, like the time, it just seemed like I was on trial for ages, but it was only like about 10, 15 days or something like that. So, um, no, I, I, you, you have to you have to back yourself, but there's got to be, there's got to be a balance. You can't go in there and be like arrogant because the lads will think, who's this? Like, and yeah. they'll make it even, because they, they don't make it easy for you anyway, the boys when you go on trial. No one really speaks to you. <laughs> it happens all the time. No one speaks to the trialist. <laughs> I, maybe there might be one or two. I do because I know how hard it is. Yeah. Because like, they look at you and think he's coming to try and take my position. Yeah. As soon as you sign, everyone's everyone's really nice. Or as soon as they see you've got a bit about you, then they they give you a little bit of respect. <laughs> but now you have to back yourself as a trialist. Yeah. You mentioned a minute ago, Tom, about obviously Daryl Clark. Um, how pleasing was it that he decided to dip into non-league and, and take a talent like yourself and, 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 and back and support it? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm forever grateful to, to Daryl. Um, you know, I love him to bits. He's a great, great guy. Um, you know, when he called me in the office and said, look, I'm going to take a punt on you. And then it was funny because he just basically discussed the contract. He just sort of wrote it down there and then. I'll give you this, give you this, and I was just like, I don't care what it is, I'm butting. But as long as it's as long as it's like the same or a little bit more than what I'm on in the army, I'm happy. Um, but then they'd done that and then sort of wrote down a figure of what what it will be if they decide to keep me after the season or a year or whatever. Right. And then that was like my focus. So I was like, I knew that if I hit ten games, it would go up more. I knew that if they extended it, it would go up even more. And I was just like, just focus on that. Um, get to take every game at a time. And I ended up playing about 26 games or something in that first season. There was talk of some clubs being interested in me in the January as well. Um, and then they ended up extending my contract then. So, yeah. Yeah, how did you find it at Bristol Rovers? Obviously, you, you, look, at their, you look at the squad that the, they've they went and put together at the start of this season and a lot of big names in there as well. How how did you how did you find your time at the club? I loved it to be honest, yeah. Loved it. The group of players that that were there when I first joined, you couldn't have asked for any any better group of players. Um 
I still look at that group now. And even like I speak to some of the boys that were there at the time and they're like, that's one of the best groups like they've had throughout their career as well. Everyone was just like close. They do things together after training. Um, you don't get a lot of that. No. Um, like you think you would, but you don't, well, especially now with COVID and stuff like that. But yeah. it was just a real close knit group. Um, I loved it. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to obviously play, play a bit more. I mean, would, would you say you've made some some real friends for life from that that group? Could you could you list any names you know that you've stayed real close with? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still speak to a lot of the boys. Um, like I said, Limesy. You know, we don't speak on a daily basis, or even weekly, but you could still pick up the phone and ring them and be like, "How are you doing?" Limesy, James Clark, Lee Brown, Ellis Harrison, Ollie Clark. Do you know what I mean? There's there's, there's loads. Yeah, of course, during your time at Bristol Rovers, there was actually a managerial change, of course. Um, Graham Coogan came in, in in place of Daryl Clark. For yourself during that time, you know, what, what was that like for yourself, uh, you know, saying goodbye to a man that had put so much, um, you know, faith into yourself and, and and saying hello to a new manager? Yeah, I mean, obviously that was that was like the first experience I had of that. Um, and I, I was gutted that he was leaving, obviously, it was all right because Cogs was coming in and he was already sort of there. So we knew him, but like everyone was gutted because you think he'd been there their years and he'd obviously he'd give like locks, Tom Lockyer's, you know, all his opportunities made him captain Ollie Clark. And then, you know, when he left, everyone was like, it was, it was emotional. You could see that people were hurt by it. Do you know what I mean? Um, even even me and I didn't be, I didn't even been there that long, but I was just so so grateful for the opportunities that he'd given me, and he'd always joke about it as well. He'd come in in the morning, all like, "All right, lads," like he'd say something to me. He goes, "I saved you." He goes, "If it weren't for me, you'd still be in the army." <laughs> all that he'd say it to loads of people. <laughs> so he's like, "You owe me, you owe me." But um, no, nah, he's good. He's a good good manager. Yeah, and then of course in 2019 you made you move to Swindon. You know, t- tell us about how that move came about. Um, just try and remember now. Obviously, I knew I knew of the interest anyway, and Cogs actually phoned me and said, "Look, Swindon want to sign you. You know, um, don't want you to go, but I'm not going to stand in your way," which is what a lot of managers say. And you're like, "Well, what do you want me to do?" Then? <laughs> like, yeah. And I, I remember it, it was mad because I went and sat in his office and I said to him, like, well, what do you, what do you want? Like I said, I, ju- I just want to play games. I, I want to play. And he's like, and to be fair to him, like, I remember when Daryl left at the time, I was like in and out of the squad and things like that, not really playing. And then Cogs come in and I was straight back in the squad and back, back involved. And in my last game, I played for them. I played the whole game and I scored against Northampton. I remember sitting with him and, and sort of discussing it and he said like I can't promise you you're going to play every week um, but you know I think you should stay but I'm not going to stand in your way and you're kind of like what am I meant to do it's like yeah, Swindon was yeah. saying you know you're going to come you're going to play every week obviously I didn't even play every week when I went there so I said okay but hindsight eh but um, I said I think I'm going to go and then he just goes, all right then, see you later. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, in his office, like, go on in, see ya. Wow. I was like, okay, I just got up and walked out. And that was it. Oh, that was it, completely. And I went in and saw the boys just before training. The boys were all in the dressing room getting changed. I was like, see you later, boys. And they're like, what? I was like, I'm off. They're like, nah, what, what are you on about? I was like, he's just said, like, go and go. And it was just so mad, like, I got wow. in the car and I felt like I was doing because I, even when I first started playing football professionally, I felt like I was doing something wrong because mm. I'd be home at like twelve sometimes in the day, and normally I'm in the obviously in the army like they know where you are, like you're meant to be there, and you get in trouble if you're not, things like that. I felt like I was doing something wrong, but like I got in the car like, that morning and just started driving home, and rung me agent. I was like, they've, they've told me like to go like what what do I do now he's like just go home <laughs> he's like, go home and we'll sort out with Swindon I was like oh. okay was was that frustrating Tom like that you were never kind of 
given a definitive reason and why that because like in that conversation there that obviously Graham's had that had that view he's saying in one breath that he doesn't want you to go and then in another breath he's saying I'm not going to stand in your way was was was, yeah. it, a, was it a frustrating that he, he, he didn't just come out and was bluntly but you'd probably rather blunt blunt honesty with him wouldn't you yeah, yeah. Like, like I say, I was, I was. It was obviously in the January, and I was in the last six months of my deal as well. So I was kind of like, obviously coming from the background that I was in, like security and stuff like that. I was thinking. I said to him, "Look, I want to stay, but I want a new deal. I wasn't asking for more money or anything like that. I just wanted another year or something like that, just a bit of security." Swindon were offering me two and a half year deal. And he was like, I can't give you one. I'm not in a position to do that. I was just thinking, well, someone is like, yeah. And they just said like, no, you can. I, I was. They wouldn't make a decision. I was just like, well, I'll go then. Mm. See what they say. And they're like, go on then. <laughs> but, <laughs> I couldn't believe it. that's shit. unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> but, but no, I'm. 